Maybe the best way to describe what I mean by a viable vision is by a quote taken from a letter I wrote to my friends in November 2002. When I do an analysis of a company, I am somewhat satisfied only when I clearly see how it is possible to bring the company to have, in less than four years, net profit equal to its current total sales. Knowing the response of people to such a claim, my next sentence was, I am also careful not to share this expectation with the top management. They will take it as a decisive indication that my suggested solution is unrealistic. During 2003, I put to the test the reaction of top management to Viable Vision. But I was careful to expose the reasons for my conviction that this apparently incredible vision is viable. I started by sharing my diagnosis of what is currently blocking the performance of the company. Based on that, and using solid cause and effect logic, I deduced the tangible steps that are bound to remove that block. Then I detailed the steps that must be taken in order to capitalize on that breakthrough. The steps that will propel the company to have, in less than four years, annual net profit equal to its current annual sales. Done in this way, the first reaction of top management was, this is just common sense. Why aren't we doing it? Why haven't they done it? How come the prevailing notion is that unless a company has unique product or unless the company is very small, it is unrealistic to expect a company to increase its net profit by so much? How come, even though it is possible to construct a viable vision for more than half the companies, the prevailing notion is that it is impossible? The answer is that most people are unaware of the fact that any complex system is based on inherent simplicity. Capitalizing on the existing inherent simplicity is what enables incredible improvements within a short time. What is inherent simplicity? To explain this concept, we first have to clarify what we refer to as a complex system. The more data one has to provide in order to fully describe the system, the more complex the system is. If one can fully describe a system in four sentences, this is a simple system. But if one needs a thousand pages to describe it, the system is complex. How complex is a system you manage? How many pages are needed to describe every process on every part, the relationship with each client? It is no revelation that companies, even small ones, are extremely complex. It is also no revelation that it is difficult to manage a complex system. So, how do we go about managing a complex system? We dissect it into subsystems. Each subsystem is by definition less complex than the whole. If you have any hesitation accepting that this is precisely what we do, just look at your organizational chart. Dissecting a system into subsystems has its price. It leads to misynchronization. It leads to harmful local optima, and in some cases, even to the devastating silo mentality. Since our systems are incredibly complex, it seems that all that can be done is just to minimize the price, to do the best we can to improve synchronization, and to foster better collaboration between the subsystems. As long as this is the only option we consider, will continue to be under the impression that achieving a significant jump in profit within a sh relatively short time is a rarity. We will continue to be under the impression that bringing the company to have in less than four years net profit equal to its current total sales is unrealistic. To see the true potential of a company, one has to delve deeper into the issue of complexity. What really bothers most of us is a fact that part of the data that typifies our system does not relate just to one component of the system, but to the relationships between two or more components of the system. In other words, the things that makes our system difficult to manage is that what is done in one place has ramifications in other places. 
The cause and effect relationships turn our systems into almost a maze. But that fact is the key that provides the solution. Think about it in the following way. Examine a given system and ask yourself, what is a minimum number of points one has to impact in order to impact the whole system? If the answer is 10 points, then this is a difficult system to manage. It has too many degrees of freedom. It's like attempting to manage a bunch of wild cats. But if the answer is just one point, then this system has only one degree of freedom. It is an easy system to manage. Now, do you agree that the more interdependencies existing between the various components of the system, the less degrees of freedom the system has? Considering the enormous complexity of your system, it follows that there must be only very few elements that govern the entire system. In other words, the more complex a system is, the more profound is its inherent simplicity. To capitalize on the inherent simplicity, we must be able to identify those few elements that govern the system. Additionally, we need to clarify to ourselves the cause and effect relationships between these elements and all the other elements of the system. Then we can manage a system to achieve a much higher level of performance. These few elements, the one dictating the level of performance of the system, are the constraints of the system. This implies that the constraints are also the leverage points of the system. Hence the name I chose for this approach, the theory of constraints, TOC. Twenty years ago I demonstrated the theory of constraint approach on production systems, manufacturing plants, in my book The Goal. Then I demonstrated it on project-based systems in Critical Chain. The marketing and strategy of companies is in its not luck. If you read any of these books, you most probably agree that the conclusions are pure common sense, even though they fly in the face of the common practice. Moreover, if you are one of the many managers who actually put it into practice, you have first-hand experience with the impressive improvements and the surprisingly short time in which you achieved them. Still. Is a viable vision possible for your company? Is it feasible to bring your company to have in less than four years yearly net profit equal to its current yearly sales? The obstacles look insurmountable. For example, it is obvious that such a quantum jump in profitability is impossible without a huge increase in sales. A huge increase in sales can be achieved only if the company will have a new offer, an offer that is unrefusable by its markets. Does such a remarkable offer exist? Can the company deliver on such an offer? What investment will be needed? And even if it all can be done, is your management team capable of implementing and sustaining such a change? In these few minutes, I am unable to answer these questions and many more. But if you join me for one day, I think that you will get enough convincing answers to follow my business proposal.